most of your DNA is Norwegian. Your original thought that your ancestors, the Gaels, were here peacefully and were attacked by the Vikings. If most of your DNA is actually Norwegian, it suggests that you were not the victims, you were the aggressors. They carved strange beasts into stone. They built hill forts even Rome could not crush. And then they vanished. For centuries, the Picts of Scotland were treated like ghosts, whispers in legend, symbols on stone, a people swallowed by time and mystery. Some called them wild warriors. Others said they were outsiders, arriving from distant lands like shadows across the sea. No records, no stories, only silence and stone. But today, Silence breaks. Scientists have done what history never could. They opened ancient graves. They sequenced picked DNA. And what they found does not match any known migration into Britain. Not Viking, not Celtic, not Roman. It is older, stranger, a genetic fingerprint unlike anything ever discovered in Scotland's past. So who were the Picts really? And why did history hide the truth? The answers buried in their bones will rewrite everything we thought we knew. Across the cold highlands of ancient Scotland, there once rose kingdoms without fear. Kingdoms ruled by a people the Romans could not break. A people who carved beasts into stone and guarded secrets behind fort walls and mist. They called them the Picts, painted warriors, shadow people, rulers of the north. They stood against Rome. They shaped Scotland before Scotland had a name. And then they disappeared. No grand final battle, no clear trace of where they went. Just broken stones and questions. For centuries, scholars argued, were they Celts who vanished? A tribe from the Far East? Seafarers from a forgotten world? Why did their symbols look so strange? Why did their history fade when others survived? The only clues lived in their graves, silent bones buried under Scottish soil. And when scientists finally reached inside those bones, the first answers shook everything we thought we knew. Because the Picts did not come from somewhere else, and they did not vanish at all. The Romans first encountered them in the late third century and gave them a simple name, the Picts. These weren't ordinary tribes. They were organized, powerful, and controlled massive territories across Northern Britain. While Rome conquered most of Europe, the Picts held their ground. They built impressive fortifications and created intricate metalwork that still baffles experts today. But here's what makes them truly strange. Despite their power, they left almost nothing written about themselves. No histories, no personal accounts. Just those haunting symbols carved into stone. When their kingdoms merged with the Scots around the 9th century, the Pictish identity simply evaporated. Their language died. Their culture vanished. It was as if an entire civilization had been erased from existence. Medieval scholars scrambled for explanations. Bede, the famous Anglo-Saxon historian, wrote that the Picts were foreign immigrants from distant lands. But were they? The DNA was about to prove everyone wrong. Scientists from Liverpool, John Moores University, and the University of Aberdeen decided to settle this mystery once and for all. Their weapon? Ancient DNA. But there was a problem. Pictish remains are incredibly rare. Most burial sites had been damaged or destroyed over the centuries. The bones that survived were often too degraded for genetic testing. Finding usable samples would require perfect conditions and a bit of luck. The team focused on two critical sites, London Lynx in Fife, Southern Pictland. This cemetery held elaborate stone monuments and high-status burials from the 5th to 7th centuries. The second site, 
Balintore in Easter Ross represented northern Pictish territories. After painstaking excavation and laboratory work, they successfully extracted DNA from eight individuals, seven from Lundin Lynx, one from Balintor. Two samples were good enough for complete genome sequencing. They compared these ancient Pictish genomes against over 8300-300 other genomes, both ancient and modern, from across Europe and Britain. When the results came back, the researchers couldn't believe what they were seeing. Every medieval legend was wrong. The Picts didn't come from Scythia. They didn't migrate from Thrace or mysterious northern islands. They weren't foreign invaders at all. The DNA revealed something far more surprising. The Picts were local, completely, undeniably local. They descended directly from Iron Age populations who had lived in Britain for generations before the Romans ever arrived. Dr. Adeline Mores, the lead researcher, called it regional continuity. The Pictish gene pool came from people already living in Scotland, not from exotic migrations across Europe. Using a technique called identity by descent analysis, Scientists compared the ancient Pictish genomes with thousands of modern people across Britain and Europe. The results were clear. Modern populations in Western Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Northumbria share significantly more genetic material with the ancient Picts than anyone in Southern England. The Picts weren't mysterious outsiders. They were Scotland's original people. But if that's true, why does Southern England look so different genetically? The answer lies in the Anglo-Saxon migrations that swept through Southern England starting in the fifth century. Those population movements changed the genetic makeup of the South. But the North and West remained more stable, preserving older British bloodlines. The Picts were part of that ancient heritage, but the DNA revealed something else that shocked historians. For centuries, scholars believed the Picts followed matrilineal succession. Power passed through the mother's line, not the father's. A sister's son would inherit the throne instead of a king's own children. If this were true, women would stay in their birth communities for life. The DNA should show it. Scientists examined mitochondrial DNA, which passes only through mothers. At Lundin Link Cemetery, they tested seven individuals. Every single one carried unique mutations. None were related on their mother's side. This meant women married outside their groups and moved away. The exact opposite of matrilineal society. The historical records had it backwards. But there was an even stranger puzzle waiting in the data. Eastern Scotland was the Pictish heartland. Their power centers, their fortresses, their kingdoms. So why do modern people in Western Scotland share more Pictish DNA? This makes no sense, until you look at what happened after the Picts disappeared. Eastern Scotland experienced massive population movements during the medieval period. Migrations from south of the Firth of Forth, arrivals from continental Europe, New genetic influences flooded the old Pictish territories, diluting the ancient bloodlines. Meanwhile, Western Scotland stayed more stable. Ironically, the region that was home to the Scots of Dalriata during the Pictish era preserved the Pictish genetic signature better than Pictish lands themselves. Political geography and genetic heritage don't always align. History involves constant movement and mixing. But one location held the Pictish DNA in an almost perfect time capsule for 2,000 years. And it wasn't on the mainland at all. The Orkney Islands. These windswept islands north of Scotland preserved Pictish genetics with remarkable clarity. Pre-Viking Orcadians showed high genetic sharing with modern Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Orkney itself. 2,000 years of continuity. Island isolation protected the genetic signature from mainland migrations. 
This data systematically destroyed every exotic origin theory ever proposed. Scythia, near the Black Sea, no genetic connection. Thrace, in southeastern Europe, nothing. Mysterious northern islands, the genetics pointed firmly to local British origins. Professor Joel Irish emphasized that this wasn't just genetics making claims. The research integrated archaeology, history, and biological anthropology. A truly multidisciplinary approach. Too often, DNA studies present themselves as the final word while ignoring decades of other research. This team did it right. They combined genetic evidence with existing historical knowledge to build a complete picture. But one mystery remained untouched by the DNA analysis. Those symbols are carved on 350 stones across Scotland. What do they mean? The symbols remain one of archaeology's greatest puzzles. About 350 carved stone monuments survive across northern and eastern Scotland. They feature strange geometric patterns researchers call double disc and Z-rod, crescent and V-rod, mirror and comb. There are animal figures, eagles, wolves, salmon, stags. And then there's the Pictish beast. Nobody knows what it represents. Some say seahorse, others claim dolphins. A few even suggest it might be the Loch Ness Monster. Recent analysis suggests these aren't just decorative art. The symbols follow non-random patterns, similar to actual writing systems. They might represent a formal written language, but without a Pictish Rosetta Stone, we can't decode them. The genetic findings add a new layer to this linguistic mystery. If the Picts spoke a Celtic language related to Brythonic tongues like Welsh, their symbols might encode words from that language family. The 8th century scholar Bede mentioned that Pictish was distinct from British, Irish, and English. He even noted that St. Columba needed an interpreter when preaching to the Picts. Most modern linguists now believe Pictish belonged to the Brythonic Celtic branch. The DNA evidence supports this. Local origins mean local language development within existing Celtic linguistic traditions. But the Pictish language died in the 10th or 11th century, when Gaelic took over. Almost nothing survived except place names and those indecipherable symbols. Which brings us back to the biggest question of all. Where did the Picts actually come from? Modern British and Irish populations are mixtures of three ancient ancestries. Western European Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, early European farmers from Anatolia, and late Neolithic steppe-related ancestry. These migrations happened thousands of years before the Pictish period. By the Iron Age, these groups had already blended into the populations living across Britain. The Picts emerged from this ancient British stock. Their genetic profile reflects those older populations that existed before new migrations changed the landscape. The Roman occupation brought people from across the empire, but genetic studies suggest less impact than expected. The Anglo-Saxon migrations into southern and eastern England had far more substantial effects, particularly in those regions. That's why southern England looks genetically different from the north and west. The Picts preserved that older British heritage. Using advanced techniques like haplotype imputation, Researchers could fill gaps in the ancient DNA and reveal population movements over 2,000 years. But what does this mean for Scotland today? The Picts weren't mysterious outsiders who vanished. They were indigenous Scots whose culture transformed. Modern Scots, especially in Western Scotland, carry Pictish genetic heritage directly in their bloodlines. The merging of Pictish and Gaelic cultures under kings like Kenneth MacAlpin created the foundation for medieval Scotland. For years, historians debated whether this merger involved conquest or peaceful unification. The genetic evidence suggests continuity. This was cultural change, not population replacement. Professor Gordon Noble emphasized that demystifying the Picts 
helps us understand the true origins of Scottish nationhood. Their genetic legacy lives on. Researchers are now planning to excavate new Pictish sites. They'll combine DNA analysis with dietary studies using stable isotopes. This can reveal what people ate and whether they moved during their lifetimes. Future studies might even uncover ancient diseases that affected Pictish populations. But one question still haunts the Highlands. If the Picts never disappeared, if their blood still runs through modern Scotland, then what else are we wrong about? Those symbols carved into stone might not be the only secret they left behind. Some mysteries refuse to stay buried. <laughs>